All right, welcome back. To, this is J-O-B, the podcast. It is uh, Friday, Aloha Friday here on the North Shore of Oahu on the Seven Mile Miracle. We're going to jump straight into it today. Today we have an epic guest. I thought it would be a great idea to bring in somebody that is always out of pipeline or in any of the heaviest moments around the world that's actually taking photos and filming as well and a model as well. I, I don't even know how to introduce this guy. He is the best looking photographer oh. in the surf industry, wow. Brent Billman. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What's up, Brent? Oh, thanks for having me, Jamie. No worries, buddy. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to get into it today. So, Brent, how long have you been shooting photos for? Oh, man. I don't know the amount of years, but... Um, I, I guess I really got into it. I was probably like about 14. 14 years old. Yeah. Now how old are you? Uh, I'm in my 30s. In we'll, just 30s. Leave, we'll leave it there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so you've been shooting photos for how long? Oh, man. I'd say the better part of, I guess, maybe 17 years. 17 years. Yeah. And how long, how long have we been friends? Um, well, th there was, there was brief periods where Jamie wouldn't talk to me for, <laughs> for reasons that were probably more my fault, you know, being a, a young Grom, but, um, oh, a man. young, good looking Grom. Uh, but, uh, I'd say, I think our first, my first like real, um, job or boat trip was with you and it was for Red Bull. I was working for uh trans world surf at the time. And, uh, all the Red Bull athletes were on it. Bruce was on it. We went to the Mentawise and. I, I believe I was 17. 17, yeah. And that was, like, the first trip. And then from there, you kind of were looking for someone to, like, shoot photos with you. And you're like, hey, do you want to stay on this trip and go to Neos after? And yeah. and that kind of was, like, the, the beginning of it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we were on this, like, epic boat trip, a bunch of epic uh, Red Bull athletes. And, uh, yeah, we, we hung out. We got a bunch of amazing photos. That was actually when Bruce Irons did – the he had the um what it was the it? flare yeah they had a flare on the yeah. back of his surfboard and literally lit up the barrel red and orange and was the most incredible thing I've ever seen your uncle yourself everybody documented this it was like it was like the cover of Trans World Surf yep it was the cover and uh, it was funny because I was in Hollywood Joe's last night and my uncle has uh, his uh, boat angle version on the wall hanging there yeah and it still looks so cool and I'm like man like. You're always trying to think of ways to like kind of just get get creative, I guess, again and, and in photography and like still to this day it's like, man, like using like lights or flares, like it, it's just like it looks like the wave is on fire. Yeah. No, no, it's crazy. I mean, like in, in my mind I was like, Oh, I was hoping I was gonna be the candidate, but like, no, Bruce is doing this stunt and like I was like, Okay, cool, whatever, like Bruce the man, I'd love to see this and uh I, I think there was a lot of like factors that could have went really bad. I remember they they lit the flares in the water. Bruce had the flares like behind his uh surfboard that was like duct taped to the They like zip tied it <coughs> onto the tail of his board where <laughs> The leash string was. Yeah. Yeah. And so they had like, like, I think it was like a couple, it was multiple flares. And then Bruce is waiting out in the back of the lineup. And uh, he had these flares just going like gnarly. Like these things like are like, like literally like spitting lava off of the back of them. Yeah. And uh, the wave came, he turned it around. He had no leash, took off. And it was like, I swear it was like first wave. Bruce is in the barrel. It's like the sun's already set. It's just orange electric, crazy. Like the, I don't know. Check it out. If you guys are like listening to this and want to see something like that, it, it, it was like one of the coolest boat trips ever. Yeah. And, and, uh, I was in the water for the shot and I was shooting like underwater fisheye. I don't know why I thought, I just thought, oh man, like I, if I could get an underwater shot of this, it could look so cool. And I just remember he passed by me like so close and like looking back, I'm like, man, I, I know you're like in the water, but like <laughs> could have gone really wrong, you know? Yeah. Um, but he was all pumped and I was like, you know, just like a young kid kind of like really getting into photography and Bruce really loves to like get under everybody's skin. And I just remember him seeing my shot and it definitely was rad. It was really different. And then he like, he was just poking my uncle and my uncle was so stoked on his boat angle and he was just like, 
yeah, Brian, but did you see Brent's underwater shot? <laughs> Why didn't you do something like yeah, that? Like, yeah. check this out. And, and it was just like pretty funny little moments, you know, like that on the boat trip. That was literally 12 years ago. I mean, the, the way it was like perfect too. It was like a, like absolutely flawless, perfect Lance's rights. And then he came out and just did a huge grab rail, Brucey turn. Like if you would have fell off on that wave, you would have, you would have had severe burns, third degree, second degree, oh. all of the above. Yeah, I, don't, I can't believe his toes didn't get burnt off doing that. Yeah, that was an insane stunt. I mean, just uh, as always, Red Bull doing really cool rad uh, trips, and then yeah, we went to Neos, scored some epic, crazy waves, and um, that was like right after the um, tsunami, and I think the wave had gotten better. Yeah, it. Um, they had the big earthquake over there, and it shook the whole world i mean in, in, in indonesia yeah. and it like like the wave was like always a good wave but it was not always the best wave mm -hmm. and then um after they had the crazy earthquake over there the reefs lifted like four or five feet so there was waves there in neos that don't exist anymore because the reefs completely out of the water but it made neos the, the crazy barreling right even better it made it underground bigger square gnarlier like just like kind of more bowly huh yeah, yeah. way more bowly way more square like it it just kind of turned in this whole new animal speaking of the animal you had the opportunity to shoot fish eye there shoot some photos there how how was it uh shooting out neos oh man i yeah so neos i uh i've shot a lot of waves in the world and i think the most pounded I've ever gotten was maybe Neos and Puerto Escondido. Wow, that's saying a lot. Yeah. But I mean like big Neos. Why? You know? Why? What happened? I don't know. I I just I think um the there's certain waves that kinda like they'll they'll pound you and they'll push you in, but there's certain waves that will actually you'll get pounded and then it'll hold you there. Yeah. And it kind of does this thing where you get a wave on the head and and instead of blowing you in it kinda like Recycles it you. recycles you yeah. and then it pulls you back right into yep. the impact Those zone again and you're like oh my god I just got a 10 verter on the head and like here comes another one, you know? Yeah. And and you kind of just got to wait till like the set's over, you know? And imagine taking a 10 footer to the head with like a 10 pound camera in one hand. So basically you're swimming with one hand now and and this camera is probably weighing you down as well. And like you got to worry about hitting the reef. You got to worry about the camera hitting you in the head. There's like so much stuff going on, huh? Yeah. A lot of people kind of like, they kind of ask that question. They're like, how do you do that? Like, how do you make sure? And it, to be honest, like, I'm more worried about, like, my camera hitting the reef and then flooding. And then I'm, like, you know, out of a camera body or I'm there for a job. And all of a sudden, like, I don't have gear, you know, yeah. that I, like, I'm like, whatever. I can, I'll survive. I'm like, you know, like, I'll live, I'll live another day. But I want to, you know, like, protect my, like, equipment. Yeah. I mean, how much? How much is like one of your your rigs, your setups, to cost on on the higher end? Uh, for like a still setup. Yeah. Oh man. Like ten ten thousand over, dollars over ten grand. Wow. Yeah. So you're swimming around like craziest ways in the world. Ten to fifteen. Ten fifteen thousand dollars. With the rigs. housing and the lenses and everything that goes into it. Well, so that's a bad day if if you hit the reef on that thing. It's it's not for it's for one. It's going to probably end your trip, and for two, it's going to be a very costly yeah. um, issue, and for three, you'll probably lose your job. Well, that that's the thing. <laughs> it's like if you're smart, you'll have camera insurance. Um, but it's more just like, kind of like, I like to be reliable for whoever has hired me to do a job. And so I always carry, you know, a backup camera, backup housing. Like that's the thing I kind of learned early on is like, you want to have two of everything just in case something happens. Yeah. And, and like, you're mostly always shooting photos. That's how you got your name. Um, fisheye photos in particular, like crazy water angles, a pipe under the lip, like, you know, pushing the boundaries of how deep you could actually sit in the lineup. Man, Jamie, I've never heard you talk me up so much. I got to do more <laughs> of these podcasts. Uh, no, I, I, I guess people like I, these days I, I shoot, you know, commercial photography, video. I, I kind of do a, a lot of different styles. Um, but when I was younger, I guess I got known for shooting the wide angle, like fisheye, like you're saying at pipe and tropu and everybody you know, saying, wow, these insane angles looking out of the barrel. And um, I really looked up to uh, Scott Eichner, Eichner and, he, yeah. and he would have like insane angles. And I would just look at those in, the best. in uh, high school and surf mags. And I'm like, wow, like how, 
how can I position myself to get a, that angle or a shot like this? Um, but to be honest, really, I, it kind of just, um, the reason I started doing that is because my uncle, Brian Bielman, he, um, you know, is one of the most well-known surf photographers ever. And <clears throat> I started getting into photography and I, I really didn't think I was going to make a living doing it. I just, I liked doing it. Um, but at, it was the time when the surf mags were flourishing and I really, I just wanted to get my shots published. Like yeah. I was having so much fun doing it. And I realized really quickly that if I did the same thing everybody else was doing and I stood on the beach with all these other guys or I shot long lens from the channel, I, I was just nobody, you know? Yeah. And, it, and honestly, I think it, it felt like it kind of made it harder with who my uncle is to actually try to make a name or try to get photos published just because, you know, it was kind of like, ah, you know, this young kid and, 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 uh, so I just realized like, Hey, I got, it's better for me to go out and put myself in like a position no one else wants to be put in. And then maybe I'll get one incredible shot all day versus a hundred good shots that everybody else has. Yeah. Because they weren't going to use my shot over my uncles or Ted Grambo or, you know, whoever, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what kind of camera gear, like if, if you're a listener and like, and you're like, yo, you want to do this photography thing, like, like what kind of camera gear should they buy and why should they buy it? Um, you, these days there's, there's a, there's a lot of different options. Um, I particularly, I use all the Canon stuff just because I've been using it for a long time. Um, but I recently kind of switched to the mirrorless lenses or and mirrorless bodies and lenses. And I still think there's still things that kind of can get better with them that kind of annoy me um but you're I, I i think long story short i would get into the mirrorless systems the cat canon um range they have some really good options the r5 is what i like to use it's a really small body you can get a fisheye lens on it and it's pretty lightweight versus yeah. when i started i had this huge rig you know one of the 1d bodies and yeah. it was so heavy and you know, the housings were way heavier and, and it, it definitely like you swim a lot slower. So, yep. you know, R five is a, is a great camera. Um, and then if you just kind of want like a broad, um, versatile lens, the 24 to one five is a great one. Cause you, you can get really wide shot. You can zoom in, kind of get like a little bit longer lens, but that's what I would say. If you just wanted like one, one, um, water setup, you know, that could work for everything. So, um, yeah. Sorry to ramble. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no worries. Um, and I, I guess another question is like, um, what, what's like, what makes you decide to shoot like a longer lens at pipe versus a fisheye? Like, cause like you could pal out there and shoot fisheye or you could pal out there and, uh, shoot longer lens from the channel. To be honest, um, I would say these days, like if I was just doing it for fun every day and I wasn't worried about missing any shots, I would just shoot fisheye just because I feel like not a lot of people are doing it anymore. Um, and I just think that it's like you get an image that's like so much different from what everybody else has. Uh, but it's more comes down to like if I swim out most of the time these days, like I, I have someone I'm working for. Yeah. Um, someone that I'm a company that I'm hired by um, a campaign or whatever I'm shooting for the winter. And I got to, you know, sometimes it's not just shooting one person, but it's like, you know, if I'm working for Quicksilver, I got to make sure I don't miss any shots of the Quicksilver guys. And I'm like, Fuck, like, I can't swim out there with a fisheye because I might get one insane shot of, of one of their guys, but I might yeah. miss like the best wave of, of the other guys. So I, I like sh shooting with that 24 to 105. And that's just more because it's kind of like I can cover my bases and I can get the wide shot if they're wide. If, if I'm kind of far away, I can zoom in and I make sure I don't miss that shot. And you're kind of just like getting more of everything, you know? So, so the wider the shot, the, the, the higher production value, unfortunately, cause you need to, you yeah. need to capture and make sure you nail everything. Yeah. So for a job, you'd probably shoot wider, mm -hmm. um, in the channel a little bit more, a little bit more, um, or, well, when you say wider, I think what you mean is like, like pull back if, if you're, if you're shooting in the channel, you're actually shooting a little bit longer lens. Yep. Um, so you'd be shooting with like, uh, you know, 85 or 
some guys shoot when we were shooting the contest they make us shoot uh 7200 yep 7200 millimeters so you're you don't get that super wide look you're more zoomed in yeah okay okay yeah sorry about that but um and then like like a fish eye is kind of like a day that you're like ah, i'm just gonna swim out i don't really care what i get yeah or it's it's more like i'm not um stressed to to like miss a shot of someone and um if pipe's really good like first reef and it's kind of in the same spot and i know that I can get the majority of the waves, like, being in the same spot. Um, for me personally, like, I think that I like shooting fisheye the most when it's, like, really west swell, kind of those big swells that they kind of, like, swing in behind uh, second reef. Yeah. And they unload all the energy on first reef. Generally, like, it's same thing with you. Like, you know where the lineup is going to be for yep. the waves that you want. Yep. And I know the lineup that I need to be in to take those – those photos right in the heaviest spot of the of that wave you know so the really west wells first reef like 12 feet like fish eye fish eye 305 yeah. degree you yeah. know west well yeah 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 he's yeah. giving all the coordinates away so when it's 305 degrees pipe back door more so pipe insane as good as it gets if you see that on the surf line or like whatever website you're looking at it says like 305 to 315 you mm-hmm. better know if those winds are right it's just it's, it's going to be the best yeah. best day of the year um i guess one thing i really want to touch on is that what most people don't understand about pipeline is is there yes everyone understands there's a pecking order in the lineup at pipeline and you know there's a group of you know 20 surfers that <coughs> are kind of going through the cycle of this pecking order and um it's like a really weird, uh, interesting, selfish dynamic to how we, you know, create and build the surf etiquette. But the weirdest thing is, is there's 20 photographers on the inside as well, and they're battling each other. And it's like this full, like, other pecking order in the lineup that no one would ever know about. And, like, you know, there's guys like Brent Billman and Zach Noyle and Daniel Russo and and Brian Billman and, and Chris Bryan and, 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 and Larry Haynes and like all these like these group of legends and they're all like you go, you you sit behind me you sit right here you're over there you're in my way like why are you shooting over there hey guy with the helmet you get out of my shot like it's like a full thing and you guys end up in like arguments and 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 like little like I don't know it's just kind of funny like to, to explain a different like like issue at pipeline and it's the photographers they're scrapping yeah um yeah no no it is pretty funny but I. You know, I, when I was young, I was at the back of the line. Yeah. And I remember going out there when I was like 16 or whatever. And all these guys like Eichner and my uncle and Larry and uh, who else, you know, I, I stayed in the back. And like, even if I swam out there with a fisheye, like I wasn't going to go swim in front of those guys. Yeah. It was just like a no, no, you know? And so I, I, Definitely, I felt like I paid my dues, and you know, like it's a, it's definitely a respect thing. And and these days, like, you know, it's not. How do, how do I say this the right way? <laughs> when if you if I go out to go shoot, you know, it's like there's a lot of you know younger guys that are out there, and they're really passionate about it, um, and they're stoked to do it. But it's like. These days, it's like that's that's how I make my living, yeah. you know. And it's like I, I'm just like, I, if I'm going out to shoot for Quicksilver, and I have a job to do, like I'm gonna put myself in the position I need to be in, because at the end of the day, like if one of those guys gets the best wave of the year and I missed it, yeah, like it doesn't matter that if I, you know, oh why did you miss it? Oh well, someone swam in front of me and there was this other photographer right in front of me. It's like, they don't want to hear that. They, yeah. All, all they care about is like, well, we're not going to hire him next year. Cause you know, he didn't get the shots we needed. So I'm like, sorry guys. Like I'm here to work. I got to pay my bills. I got a mortgage. Like so, so this is sliding to straight be. into the front. You're I like, mean, you're like, sorry, no, Noel. There, sorry, no, Brian. No, no. Sorry. Like, there's, I'm <laughs> there's certain guys that like are, are out there and you know, like Noel and, Russo and uh you know like we we definitely I feel like work together and I think once you're at that level there's a mutual respect Kaoki yeah. we all kind of like are like hey who are you shooting for 
okay, cool, I'll make sure I'll swim under, you know, for those waves and vice versa because we're all there to, to shoot different people. Yeah. And we're not just trying to, like, get everybody. So I think there's a cool mu- mutual respect there. Um, it's just, like, a lot of the, the guys who are kind of just starting out, you yeah. know, and they're, they're they're just there to get, like, an Instagram shot for their yeah. Instagram, you know. Half, half the time I feel like, like, like half the people or more than half the people that are shooting photos in the lineup shouldn't be out there. I'm like, I already, I know, I know some of them and I'm like, why? Like, but there are those perfect days at pipe that a lot of these guys make it out there and uh, they could shoot photos of these crazy ways, which makes it crazy. But are they qualified? No. Do they have the balls? Yes. But does that really make sense? I don't know. Sometimes there's probably like 50, <laughs> almost 50 but, photographers but out of pipe. It's, it's the same thing with you and probably surfing. Yeah, it's there's very a true. lot of guys That's very true. that, yeah, they can get out there. Maybe they got the balls to get out there, but I don't think they really, until you've like been in a heavy situation and you've gotten humbled, yep. they haven't experienced that yet. And so they're just, they're going with their bravado and, and that's why it is kind of good. It's not like there's these bullies out there that are trying to, you know, beat people up and tell them like, Hey, you're not welcome here. It's more kind of like, Hey, like this is a heavy situation. People can get hurt. There's a safety, you know, like kind of issue. And, and it's more about guy safety is what yeah. I'm getting at. Yeah. And, and I, I'm sure that you feel the same way with, with that and your guys pecking order and lineup. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, speaking of Zach Noyle, Zach, uh, called in and he oh, has man. a couple of questions for you, Brent. So we're oh, going to, we're going to play those right now. <sighs> Go ahead, Jacob. Hi, Brent Bielman. Zach Noyle here. <laughs> and I wanted to know the story behind your favorite photo. I want to know the lens. I want to know how you shot it, what was going through your head, and even the emotion that it evokes to this day and how it makes you feel. Looking forward to seeing and hearing this. Thanks, man. Boom. Man, he's always so well spoken. Huh? You gotta get that mic closer to you, buddy. <laughs> he, he's all sorry. Zach is always so well spoken. I guess that's the difference. You know, I grew up on North Shore, and he grew up in town. And yeah, he's a nah. He's a really good, uh, really good photographer and a good friend of mine. I really respect Zach a lot and um, really look up to him. So thanks, Zach. Uh, so my favorite photo at the moment that I've taken probably. Just, I guess, the, the most special to me Spit it w- up, would be the Kelly Seth shot, I okay. think, yeah. uh, last last uh, year during the Pipe Masters. That's when they're hugging in the lineup? Yeah. Yeah? Or, it was, yeah, I guess a hug. Was yeah. it, what, what was it? So, well, for one, like, Kelly was just about to turn 50. Yeah. And I've, you know, it's just like, since I've been a little kid, I've looked up to him. It's like, he's the GOAT. Yeah. He's the best, Greatest you know, ever. Time. And, uh... There was just like a lot going into that um, contest. I I had given. Can I can, can I tell tell a story about the yeah? Go for it. So basically, um, a few years earlier, were you in the same heat during the Volcom Pipe Pro of that empty wave? Yep, we were all in that same heat. So so for me, from my side of it, they used my photo that year for the Pipe poster. Masters for the poster. Yep, and. Um, Basically, that wave that they used was an empty wave during a Volcom Pipe Pro event. Kelly was in the heat. I think you were as well. But Kelly missed it. The wave went right under him. And I just, for like months, he kept asking me like, oh, do you think I could have got under that? Like, if I would have been a little farther in, could have I gotten it? So for Christmas, I got it printed on metal and I gave him to as a Christmas present. Yeah. Kind of like, yeah. you know, like, here you go. Here's the one for, <laughs> to remember for the ones that you don't get, you know, because it's yep. like that, that pr- guy gets a million good waves, but he remembers the ones he didn't didn't get. I remember so. that wave. It was in the final of, of the Vulcan Pipe Pro and it was like me, Kelly, Bruce and Makai McNamara yeah. and, and this wave came through and we all kind of looked at it and started paddling, but this wave went underneath and upside down and was like the most badass wave that I wouldn't say I ever seen that pipe, but maybe like I had the opportunity to maybe think about it and Kelly got to think about it and Bruce got to think about it and Makai and we all like missed this wave that if any, which one of us would have got this wave during the contest, it would have been a 12 and Brent took this photo of the wave with nobody on it empty lineup and it was like probably one of the most incredible photos ever taken at pipeline and kelly 
can't sleep over it still. <laughs> no. So, so yeah, kind of like getting back to the, the question that Zach had. So basically I showed up, th- they used the photo of this wave and there was kind of history between it with me and Kelly. And so instantly I was kind of just rooting for him. I was yeah. like, man, I just want him to win. Like it would be so incredible. It just like feels like it's a good omen. So long story short, he kept making heats. I was out there for the final shooting for WSL and I just really wanted to get that shot of him if he won, you know, and yeah. I, I imagined it would kind of be like that Joel Park go shot where he's like standing up on his board with his arms in the air yeah. and everybody behind him. And so I kind of like about 40 seconds before the heat um, finished, I was already swimming out to the, to the back and you're kind of hoping that no one catches a wave at the last minute yeah. so that you're, you, you're not in the wrong position and I got there just in time, and him and Seth had come together, and um, uh, um, Strider was there. And I remember Strider kind of was like, didn't know what to do, if he should go in with the mic or wait. And I just remember I kind of like grabbed the tail of his board and just like went around it really no fast. And just <laughs> I was just like, man, I just, I just want to get that one quick moment. And yeah. I was able to get in front right as they kind of hugged and, you know, and that, and then it was over and I didn't even know if I got it or not. I was like so nervous. I was like, Oh my gosh, like, I hope I got a shot out of that. Yeah. You know? and I'm, I'm assuming that's probably the last contest Kelly's ever going to win and the biggest event of his life and his career being, you know, almost 50 years old. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say that on camera, you, but uh, you captured <laughs> the moment. No. I mean, he could probably but, win another pipe masters but for the night. And next it's more, years. it's not like, I don't look at it like, well, I captured the moment I look at it like, I'm just grateful to have been there for the moment yeah. and been able to to press the button to yeah. kind of like keep that moment, you know, in history. And to me, I just think there's so much that goes there, there. You look at the photo and it's just there's so much emotion that comes out of it for so many people, not just my generation, but my dad's generation, my uncles and everybody watching Kelly for for so long. And um, you know, even with Seth um, and Seth being Hawaiian and it's just like, the, like the history of surfing, yeah. it was really cool, and and I was just really um, honored, and and I couldn't believe how many people were like impacted by that photo. And I think the the most special thing kind of was that these days with social media, I feel like photography, um, especially, it's really hard to get people excited about one image because they just kind of scroll on Instagram. And they just look and it's just kind of like it's there and it's gone. But it really, I guess, kind of like spoke to people. And, yeah. and I was just like, I was really happy that I could be there for that moment. That's a great one. And and we have another question for Zach. He was so excited when I told him we're doing the podcast. And he, he, he decided to ask you two questions. So right. Jacob's going to roll that right now. Hi, Brent Bielman. This is Zach Noel. I have a question for you. I wanted to know how you split and share your time between modeling and photography uh-huh. because I see you in both. First, I see you modeling, then you're photographing, then you're modeling, then you're photographing. And I just want to know how one splits their time and balances that in the life of Brent Bielman. There we go. Zach with another good uh, one. Zach's got funny questions. I don't model. I never have. But yeah, right. I don't, I don't know what he's talking about. If there's a girl watching this podcast right now, she's probably like, whoa, who is this guy? <laughs> I, I might have done a couple small jobs back small. in the day when I was when I was younger. I he, know. Brent. I'm older these days, and those days are done and dusted. Brent's done some six-figure work in the modeling industry. <laughs> don't be fooled. <laughs> yeah. what else how, how do you how do you how do you like balance it because you were model before you started doing photography like at a young age you started modeling like that was kind of like your first like little start you had right man Spit you're, it out, you're really dude. gonna make me talk about this right yeah now? dude you're the best you're you're the <laughs> best looking dude on the north shore yeah stop <laughs> This is getting weird i'm sorry guys <laughs> if you're if you're still listening at this point <laughs> grab grab some food or something again go on google uh, and google brent uh, bill no, no, modeling photos <laughs> uh, i think i've wiped most of those off the internet thank uh-huh. god um now nah, I, I i okay uh, being serious like like i did a little bit you gotta talk into the mic buddy that thing is 20 feet away I, from you i did a little bit back in the day and i think that it's like to be honest i've never been super comfortable being in front of the camera but 
when you're young, you're just trying to survive and like, it was it, cool to make money, you know? Yeah. And uh, I was really fortunate that I can make money doing it that, um, make money, um, that way. So looking back, I feel like these days I shoot a lot of lifestyle photography, um, you know, like kind of a lot of, uh, swimwear fashion. And I think I kind of understand it helped me understand like how to work with people better. Yeah. Um, how to get people to move, how to get them to be comfortable. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. That's, he didn't, he didn't really answer the question, but, um, <laughs> how I split my time. I don't, I don't do that much anymore. You I'm being did honest. A lot. Anyways. I mean, Brent, Brent's like, yeah, we won't talk about that, but anyways, I, I got a question for you. So, so do you think like the, the, the like future of, you know, photography and cinema photography, like being like, obviously they're both separate things, but do you feel, and like we were talking earlier is like video becoming more valuable than photos? Or are they both kind of like equally split in a certain way? <coughs> like, so yeah. I think that um, right now what's really has driven video kind of to be the staple is uh, social media. And, I think it's just, you know, the companies, they, they just are constantly looking at numbers. And if you look on Instagram and TikTok or whatever, it's, it's the reels that are getting the numbers and it's, it's hard to get the same engagement on a photo. I don't know if you feel that way, like with your social media, but, totally. but I just think that it's, it doesn't, it's hard. Like I said, that's why I was so stoked on the Kelly Seth shot because it, it got so many people's attention and captivated them but it's really hard to do with photos. So for the photography jobs that I have, most of them are kind of commercial and they're like catalogs for, you know, the, the, the new products, they always need photos. But as far as, you know, the, 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 the jobs where you're kind of telling a story, it's just all video these days. I think that, um, as far as your question goes, like what's going to drive it. I, I see a lot I just, I've been talking a lot about, about AI with people lately. Yeah. I think that we're going to see these new softwares that are coming out that are just going to like change everything. Yeah. I totally. think, I think that not only with the way that people shoot, but I think that we're maybe not going to be as pressed to have to spend so much money for these super high end cameras, like people that are shooting fountain cameras and the really, really expensive reds because I think there's me software now that will be able to up res and put frames in to slow your footage down to yep. make it look like it was shot with these crazy cameras. So I think that I, I can't really totally comprehend where it's going with the AI, but I just think that that's the future and, and, uh, that's going to change, change it up a lot. So I got a, I got a question for you. So would you make more money shooting fisheye at a pipeline, like 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 putting your life on the line, s swimming ten to twelve foot pipe, or would you make more money shooting a catalog? Oh, catalog all day. <laughs> no, <laughs> but for what, sure. What, but what would you rather do? Fisheye. Fisheye. Yeah. So you'd rather risk your life, make less Definitely. money. Definitely. Well, I I I w if I'm making enough money to be comfortable, I'm happy. Like, but for me, I love like for you, it's it's like you get that like amazing pipe wave and you get that adrenaline it's the same thing for me taking photos yeah i'm out there shooting fisheye and i get a shot of you on like a a 10 footer west bowl and it's just like the moment i take that shot i can feel that like it that was a good one yeah you know and and it, i get the same adrenaline excitement endorphin you know that you probably <laughs> yeah. get like getting spit out of the barrel but to be honest, like if I, if I shoot like a catalog job, you know, I'm probably going to make, I, I guarantee I'm going to make a guaranteed pay for the day, a day yep. rate. Yep. I know, um, that I'm not going to miss a shot. And if I do, I can restage it yes, really easily Exactly. where I remember when I was younger and if I was out of position and I missed one of your waves, I might've gotten 10 or nine out of 10 of your waves. But if yeah. I missed the one. It was like I never hear the end of it, yeah. you know. 
And that, that would stress me out more than anything, you know? I, I think one of the cool, like, dynamics of, like, like photography and photographers shooting photos at Pipeline or, or anywhere around the world and, and the photography and the surfers' relationships, right? Because, like, they're putting themselves in harm's way, but you're, I'm trusting you to be in harm's way knowing that you'll, you'll, you'll get out of my way, but you'll get the perfect shot, but you won't chandelier me. So, like, a lot of photographers, that when they're not good, they'll be in the barrel and they got the fish eye up and they're, they're like making all this commotion and they drop a bunch of water down, which therefore creates a chandelier. That's like this big thing that falls down in front of you. And it's like, it makes it like difficult to make these waves. So when I'm pulling in front of Brent, I trust Brent, like Brent hundred percent. Like I won't even see Brent barely on the wave, like barely ever. And then he'll like come to me after I rode the wave. I'm when I'm paddling back out and he's like, Jamie, check this shot out. And then we're like literally reviewing the shot in the lineup at pipe he's like any sets coming he's like check out these photos oh my god and we're like going through it we're like whoa this is so sick like i'm literally getting like like after like five ten seconds after i kicked out of the wave brent's like giving me like a like a full like display of all the photos he just took on my last wave so yeah. cool i i think that you know in, in i guess in my career it's it's really like you said about the relationships you have with certain surfers and some people you just click with and like somehow you find yourself always linking up yeah and it's maybe maybe it has to do with like the waves you like and where i like to sit yeah um there's a lot that goes into it and that kind of really is what makes a good relationship between a surfer and a photographer um and i feel like you know i missed a few waves but like i think that i was there more often than not like, yeah. or I tried to be, <laughs> no, like if, if you're like, Oh, like this guy just like takes pictures and, and it's pretty easy. Like I've like, honestly, like a couple of times I'm like, well, like if this whole surfing thing doesn't work, I'm just going to like jump straight into photography and like swim out the pipe. And like, I I'll jump, I'll jump all these guys in the freaking pecking order and I'll just go you know, shoot deep, you know? So anyways, I, I got a couple of times, I like paddled out with a GoPro or I swam out with a GoPro and my pair of fins and, and man, it was so much more difficult than I actually thought. Just trying to be in the right spot and get the right moment and extend your arm just the right amount, not get caught inside, not get the lip to your head. Like shooting fisheye is so gnarly at the gnarliest wave in the world, you know, whether it's Chopo or Pipeline or Neos or, or Jaws, like wherever you're doing these like acts of photos in these heavy areas, these are the, mo these are the areas where Brent, where Brent's taking these photos are the areas where we die. Like literally like Brent could be my lifeline because he's so close to where um, I hit the reef or someone else hit the reef. Like I kind of know that Brent's going to probably grab me too. Cause that's like, like where you're doing your thing is like where I'm doing my thing. And like, we're in the heaviest place in the world at that time. And it's, it's scary. And like, I just give major props to, you know, you guys out in the water. And, and I think what's really cool is like a lot of you guys all wear helmets, you know, I'd say probably 95% of the photographers wear helmets. And I would say about, you know, like, 15% of the surfers wear helmets. So at least the photographers kind of check themselves and check their egos because in, in the surfing side of things, everyone's, you know, got big egos. And, oh, I'm not wearing a helmet. I'm not wearing a helmet. And all the photographers wear helmets, right? I, I think that it's gotten a lot better, even, uh, at, at least in the surf um, scene. Yeah. Like with the helmets. Personally, I've been knocked out at pipe with the helmet on. Shooting. Like, shooting. Shooting a photo. Shooting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was out for, for a bit. Um, Zach actually, you know, uh, I remember, uh, being at the lifeguard tower in the ambulance. Oh, they took you away in the ambulance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got pretty messed up. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I, for about a year, I, I had a really bad concussion. And oh, severe concussion. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was not fun to deal with. Shooting photos up high. Yeah. Did you hit your camera or did you hit the reef? Hit the reef. Wow. Yeah. Face first in the back of your head? You know what? I, I was, it was a big day at pipe. I was kind of, I had think I had just like gotten over the flu and I wasn't feeling a hundred percent and something told me like, ah, oh, you know, don't think with your ego, just take it easy, go out, shoot yeah. white, you know, with a longer lens. And it was like, you know, big first reef pipe, you know, eight to 12 feet West went out fisheye <clears throat> and I just had a wave just break right on my head oh. and it was low tide. And I just remember it grabbed me and then the next thing I knew I was kind of like going over with it and I was like oh sh that's you know? the scariest part and the last thing I remember is just I it felt like I remember my back hitting and then I remember my head kind of whiplashing yep. backwards and it felt like someone hit me in the back of the head with a baseball bat Whoa. 
And that was like the last, the last thing I remember is like, wow, did someone just hit me with baseball bat? And then, and then the next thing I remember, I just instinctively like put my head above the water and took a big breath Whoa. and I had been out probably under for like a minute or something and drifted. Um, and or maybe, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds, you know, but long enough. Yeah. And I just like your body, your, you just like, thank God your, your, your body smarter than you, you, you understand. I yeah. just remember putting my head out of the water and taking a breath and I didn't know where it was, what my name was. Um, I hit my back really hard and I couldn't move my legs. And I was like, all I could think of was like, oh, I can't move my legs. And I was trying to swim with my arms yeah. and I, you know, made it in and, um, the lifeguards got me and took me up there and Zach had, you know, kind of seen what went down and he came up and was all concerned. I kind of remember he was like the only person I kind of recognized, you know? Yeah. But, um, long story short, wear your helmets. I, you know, like, I don't know what would have happened to me if I wasn't wearing my helmet. Um, it cracked down the back. Whoa. That's serious. Yeah. So you got a concussion while wearing a helmet. Yeah. That's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. That's you would you would have probably died if you didn't want, weren't maybe, wearing a helmet. Maybe. If, yeah. Maybe. If you yeah. had a concussion through a helmet and it cracked, like that would have been your skull cracking. Yeah. But I, I totally understand like when guys talk about like their um concussions and just having you don't understand. It's like it's not something you can see, you know? It's yeah. it's I couldn't remember my friends' names. Like I I would go to like say someone's name, like you, like you for example, yeah, and it would be on the tip of my tongue. But I just, I'm like it, the information's there, and you know it's there, but you just can't like you can't say it. It's you're like, the weirdest thing. You're like Jay, yeah, chemo, yeah. chemo. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> that's but, my that's but, my Hawaiian name. But luckily, you know, I kind of like uh, I f- I feel like I feel like everything went back to normal for the most part. Awesome. Let's but get, let's speak. Go, let's just get back to normal. Tatiana West and Webb called in and wanted to ask Mr. Brent Billman a question. We're gonna run that one right now. Cool. Let's go, Tati. Hey, Brent. This is Tatiana West and Webb, your good friend. And my question to you is, how do you compete with all the other water photographers that are out trying to shoot at pipe and back door? What's the method to your madness? And how do you get the most insane photos? Thanks, Tati. Yeah, thanks, Tati. Um, I, by, by the way, I, I love Tati. I've been shooting her since I think she was about 16 or 17. And uh, at this point I kind of feel like she's family and and uh really enjoy hanging out with her and uh, her husband Jesse and Greg are filmer so yeah. thanks for calling in great people yeah um so that kind of is a similar question to kind of what we've talked about as far as the pecking order but the method to my madness of like making sure I, I get you know a good shot with with how many other photographers there are is like I said I just like I I'm not trying to, I don't want to sound full of myself, but it's like, I know I put the time in and there are certain guys like Zach, K.O. Keeve, Russo, we have a mutual respect for each other and we're all out there to um, work and we know who we need to shoot. I shoot for Body Glove a lot. Tati's sponsored by Body Glove. So if I'm out there and I have to get a shot of her, I'm going to position myself where I need to be to make sure that no one else is in front of me if she gets the wave. Exactly. You know, like I can't. I'm not going to give them a photo and have to Photoshop <laughs> someone out. Like, I'm yeah. like, I'm sorry, but like, if you're not one of the top guys that, you know, is out there to shoot someone else or, or even if you don't need a shot of her, you're not, you're not working for body love. It's like, I'm sorry. Like I need to be in the spot you're in and yeah. I will swim in that spot to make sure I get the photo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like just working with the talent that's in the lineup. And then especially if you're there to shoot them, you, you kind of like in, in a weird way, feel more obligated to like get, get up there and get in, in there for the shot. Yeah. Because like at the end of the day, <laughs> I'm going to have a way harder time explaining to you why I wasn't in the spot than I am saying sorry to another photographer. Hey, sorry, I really need that shot. I'm sorry. I swam around you and yeah. got, you know, got in your way. You know, so. you know, it's kind of an interesting one. So I remember maybe like 
maybe eight or eight, eight years ago when GoPro started like coming into like the conversation, I used to always have a GoPro in my mouth. And this is when photos were like super big. Like everyone's just like trying to get the cover of the surfing, mags, yeah. magazine, trans world, all these magazines. And I had this big GoPro in my mouth and was like, get that GoPro out of your mouth. Like you're ruining all your photos. Like, do you remember like being a part of that? Like, yeah, I mean, I was bummed too because I was working for, I think, you know, I, I started off working for trans world surf. I yeah. worked for, for them for five or six years. And then I went to surfing a uh, magazine with Pete Terrace and you know, it's, they took it super seriously. Like they wanted a clean shot. They, they didn't want the guy dragging his hand, making water spots. They wanted that picture perfect shot, almost like it was shot in a studio. And then all of a sudden it's like, you got the GoPro mouth (laughs) mounts now and you can't see the person's face. You just see this like (laughs) GoPro in their mouth. And Uh, yeah, it, it was tough. And it's like, you know, looking back, you know, you guys were really smart for what you did and you saw, that social media was kind of evolving and you were getting the views and, you know, started doing your YouTube channel and, and, and your show and everything. But for us, it was like, you know, we were employed by these mags and, you know, it's like we wanted to get a certain amount of covers every year so that we, we could stay on retainer as one of the staff photographers. And, you know, I, I remember like having to try to Photoshop <laughs> GoPros I spent hours trying to Photoshop GoPros out of your mouth. And at the end of the day, I'm just like, I, I can't even do it. Like, this is, this is crazy. You know, uh, that's funny, man. Yeah. I remember, I remember that. Like I would get that GoPro out of your mouth and I was like, I'm getting my own content. Like, <laughs> it's, yeah. it was like a funny little, little weird rivalry for, for a minute. But now it was, it was cool to see like everything kind of evolve. Cause now it's like a lot of the photographers have GoPros on top of their cameras because their lenses are only so wide. And sometimes when they're pulling away, some of the best shots they're getting are slow-mo on the GoPro that's sticking out a little bit higher and like these crazy moments. Yeah. I mean, for me, if, especially if I'm shooting fisheye or wide angle, um, stills, I'll make sure I always have a GoPro on yeah. top because it's like some, and it's sad to say, but sometimes like that video pass by from the GoPro can be way more viral than the single frame photo. Like, yeah. so for the single frame photo, I might be able to approach one of your sponsors and be like, Hey, do you guys need a photo of Jamie, you know, for whatever. And then I'll have the video for myself or for whoever I'm working for. And I'll be able to kind of double dip, I guess you would say. Speaking of double dip, what's the most you ever sold a photo for to a surf um, company? A surf, the highest, the highest photo I've ever sold to, I I mean, I've sold photos to, to White Claw and, and different brands that were like surf related. But as far as in the surf industry, it would probably be a, a fisheye photo of Rochelle Ballard to O'Neill. Wow. What, I think. What did they spend? I think they spent like five or six grand on Some it. Nice. But that was like right in the beginning of my photography career. And at that time, it was like, it was a big deal to get a sh- shot, a fisheye shot of a girl in a barrel. It was yeah. a back door. Okay. And um, she was great out there. Yeah. And so I, I kind of lucked out on that one. Oh, you paid your rent for like two months right there. I have one photo. I think I was like 17 and I just didn't even know what to do. That's freaking <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Just one photo, five or six thousand dollars. I mean, yeah. 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 But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's pretty hard to do these days in the surf industry. So that's why you kind of hope to get like the commercial jobs or um, even shooting the catalog stuff is, you know pretty good <laughs> yeah you got you kind of you, you could work all angles like you know you could shoot photos you could shoot video you could shoot you know the reds and yeah and, and i feel like just just being like m- like very diverse in in our industry or out of our industry i, I feel like there's going to be a constant flow of jobs and like and like anything in life right it's like who you know and you know relationship building so mm-hmm. if you're like you're trying to get in photography it's like it's, it's it is a lot about who you know and and how good you are but then also about that like relationship, um, 
that that you create and build because I, I think I, I personally think I might be wrong but like half the reason why you're working with Tati was probably because when I was writing for Body Glove I pulled Brent in I was like yo Brent mm -hmm. and then I had I had you on like a little retainer from Body Glove and then Body Glove dropped me but they kept Brent and then it kept like kept you like keep doing photos and then you know Tati was like already on the team and then you guys made friends and it's just like yeah. this, this whole thing about like relationships you know like you've probably been working for Quicksilver for years and and uh, O'Neal or just a whole bunch of different brands like that. That's just all about building a relationship. Yeah, no, totally. And, and I think that's, that's probably, that's not obviously not just the surf industry. I think that's every industry. And at the end of the day, you know, there's 8 billion people in the world and the population is only growing and there's a lot of talented people out there. And yeah, yeah like people say like, Oh, you know, you're one of the best and stuff. But at the end of the day, no one wants to work with someone that's hard to work with, no. you know, like, and I kind of, you know, like I, I definitely wasn't perfect always, but I figured out like, Hey, like you gotta be reliable. You, you know, people, you gotta be nice to people, people, you gotta get along with them. They gotta want to work with you. You know, you could be the best water photographer in the world. And if you're just too hard to deal with, they're going to go to the person who is easy to deal with and then they, they like to work with, you know? Yeah. Exactly. I, I, w I was wondering another question is like, where is like the best place you've ever be like been to and traveled to for photography for like surfing reasons? For <sighs> surfing reasons, I'd say, you know, I, I think Tahiti is just incredible. Yeah. Um, personally, I, I, I've been really fortunate to go to a lot of places all over the world but I just hate traveling for days. Like you're so exhausted by the time you get there. So for us, Tahiti is only a five hour flight away. And it's, it's really reminds me a lot of home and, and Hawaii. And, um, the water clarity is like just the best incredible in, in, in the world, you know? Yeah. And, and then for me, the style, the ways that they have there, like Chopu. Yes. It's just like, it's like you are so, close to like one of the heaviest waves in the world it's like watching the super bowl of surfing some days yeah you know you got all the people in the boat like literally they could throw their drink into the barrels are you ever scared the boat like propellers gonna oh, run you over in the lineup while you're shooting photos it's that's half the reason like sometimes there's been days where it was like tow days and i'm shooting fisheye and the, literally everybody's like oh you know, Brent's just trying to make a statement or, yeah. or he's trying to show everybody how like badass he is. And it's, it's not that it's that I couldn't get a spot in the boat. So you had to swim. And like, literally, if you're shooting with a 50 mil, you're going to be right in front of the boats and that close to the engines and the props. And I'm like, I, I have to shoot wide angle because it's like, it's going to be way safer than being next to the boat, you know? Not, well, for, for one, you're, you're, you're like worried about dying if this wave sucks you over the falls and slams you in the reef. For two, you're I'm worried way about way more worried the about the boat engines running you over yeah. and the propeller just jacking you up. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's all because there was not enough room for Brent on the boat. <laughs> nah. No, there's, there's like, there's like 15 boats out there and it's just like, it's just this chaotic, like pecking order, like, like how the surfers surf at pipeline, the photographers work at uh pipeline as well. Like at Chopo, it's like, you, you also have the pecking order of the boats, which is like another crazy thing. I, I remember being younger and whether I was like, I remember being in, at a Fiji swell or at Chopu and there's, I'm not going to say names, but like the older photography crew and they're all got their spots in the boat. My yeah. uncle's there in, in, in the, I think he really liked being in the front of the boat, um, at Chopu. Yeah. And I'm like, Hey guys, like, like what, what what's it going to cost? Can I hop on? And they all just kind of like pretend like they don't hear you. <laughs> yeah. And then next thing you know, like someone's like, Oh, you can hop in my boat. And I'm like five boats behind everybody, like <laughs> just getting blocked by every shot, you that's know? Crazy. So that's kind of like another thing that that's why I was pushed to do water photography. That's cool. I, I remember this uh, one, one time um, it was like massive chopo and, and the boats going up and um, there was this guy, Pete Frieden and um, it was like the boat was about to go over the falls and, and uh, there was a bunch of people on the boat and, Pete was the one guy to um, 
to jump off the boat. You and know what? I think he actually had his girlfriend on the boat and yes, he that's bailed his he girlfriend. Bailed, he <laughs> bailed his girlfriend on the boat and then the boat got sucked back into the lineup. And then I, I think uh, she broke up with him after that. Uh, I'm like, pretty sure she did. I, I was really young at the time, but I've heard the story from my uncle a million times. Man didn't go down with his bail, bro. Ugh. He bailed his chick on the boat and she almost died. It was pretty heavy. Ugh. Yes, yeah, shooting chopo is scary. I mean, like if you look at it, like where is more scary to shoot? Is it chopo or pipeline, and why? Oh man, I would say that's that's kind of depends on the swell direction. Yeah, I think when chopo is really west, scary. it's so scary. Oh yeah, because like it literally bends back in on itself, and it just goes dry in yeah. that corner. And there's been times where, like, I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, it, I'm literally, I have, like, three or four feet to swim under this wave. Yep. And then the wave is so thick that sometimes you don't swim far enough out the back of it, and you come up, and then you realize you're in the lip of the wave. Yeah. And it, you're going over with yeah. it. Like, that's happened to me, and it's terrifying. Sure. So, yeah. so if Chopu's really west like that, it's terrifying to shoot fisheye. Um, pipe... I actually don't think pipe, like, for me is that scary. Um, I feel like a lot of times, like, it will kind of, like, recycle you and just flush you out into the channel. Yep. Um, it kind of, it's, it's especially when it's really west, it just, th there's so much water kind of flowing through. Yeah. Backdoor terrifies me. Like, when it's, like, six to eight feet, it's just dry. So and, shallow. And you get those waves that are just, like, there might be a set like every hour that's just a little bit bigger than the rest mm -hmm. of them and you have nowhere to go. You're getting caught inside, yeah. guaranteed. Like, and these days, like a lot of times, like I've, I've just gotten smarter. I'm like, okay, like rather, rather than stress out, like I know I'm not going to make this one. I know I'm not going to get under it. Mm -hmm. I'll actually start swimming in towards yeah. the beach yeah. because then I'll give myself a chance to kind of like let the wave break and I get a little bit further away from it yeah. and there's less energy in the wave. Yeah. I mean, and, and especially like what you're saying and going back to Chopo is like when you're duck diving a wave as a surfer, sometimes a wave's so strong. It sucks you straight back over the falls. <laughs> like you've never feel, it felt, it feels like a waterfall is just pulling you back over. And it's like, to me, so scary. And, and, and saying that same thing when you're at pipe or backdoor at any wave in general, when you're, when you're taking big waves on the head, sometimes it's like you said, it's a good idea to just start paddling towards the beach or swimming towards the beach. Like, the, and then like as you're getting wiped out swimming in the white water towards the beach and trying to get out of like harm's way yeah you just kind of want to get like as far away from that energy as you can you know and yeah. there's only a split second of that like intense energy in the wave you yeah know? and then once it kind of like hits the reef and there's white water you're you're a lot safer yeah um so we have one more question for mr jack robertson we're gonna <coughs> roll that one right now thanks jack <coughs> Hey Brent, it's Jack Robinson and I wanted to ask you a question about shooting in the water. What's the gnarliest wave that you've ever shot at and how is the pecking order in the lineup being like the best water photographer at Pipeline and being right in the thick of it at the most dangerous wave in the world? Um, I always see you in the craziest spots at Chopu at Pipeline, and I was wondering when you're also going to shoot fish eye at Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jack. All right. That's my question. So, uh, let's see. The, for, thanks for calling in, Jack, by the way, and uh, good luck at uh, um, Margaret in the next comp. Home turf. Yeah. Uh, let's see it. Two, two years in a row. Hope you win. Um so the, the gnarliest wave that I've ever shot at. Oh, I, okay. To be honest, the most terrified I think I've ever been was probably in Puerto Escondido. Wow. And, um, just on a really, really big day. Um, that wave's incredible for shooting fisheye, but when it gets really, really big, the peaks can come anywhere. It just like moves all up and down the beach yeah. and it does that thing that I, we were kind of talking about earlier where it will just obliterate you. And instead of pushing you in, it will hold you in the same place. Yeah. 
And I remember this one session, it was big, like really, really big. Like the guys were using their like, you know, eight Oh guns kind of day. Big boards. And, um, I decided to try to go shoot fish. eye. um, I remember Russo, like he was kind of doing, um, wide angle there on yeah. the really big swells for a few years. And he was getting some incredible images and I went down there for a swell. I'm like, Oh, well, you know, I like was really inspired and, and I, I want to try to, you know, do the same. And I just remember, I thought I was going to drown. Oh my God. Like I, w- I was like maybe 15 waves on the head and it wouldn't let me in. And I just kept looking back at the beach, like going like, does anybody see me right now? Like, yeah. am I going to be okay? And then it's, it's sand bottom. And so you think you wouldn't be a, as afraid as the reef, but like, I just remember getting pounded and it just holding me on the bottom. Yeah. And then you, you know, that feeling where you're like, feel like you're getting crucified. Like you can't get up. It it's just, just like, you to the bottom and you can't yeah. get off. Yeah. You're like trying to lift up and it's just like, someone's got their hand on your chest and yeah. it's just holding you there. Yeah. You get up and you're like, take one breath and then literally the next wave's in your face. And then it does it to you again. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, am I, am I going to die? Yeah. So I have a lot of respect for that wave. I haven't been back there in probably over, I don't know, like almost 10 years. It's been too long. But I still remember like being terrified that session. And I was able to finally make it out the back. And I remember I swam like as far down the beach as I could because yeah. I was like, I just got to get like far away from these peaks okay. and try to like <laughs> get in. Yeah. Um, and then what was Jack's next question? Oh, I don't know. We were just talking. Oh, when you're going to shoot Jaws, actually. Okay. When am I going to shoot Fisheye though? Jaws. I don't know if it's like beneficial to shoot Fisheye out there. Why? I, I went over this year and I shot uh, some video with Larry before he passed away. Um, we were working on um, a documentary, um, and I, to be honest, like, it's, it's not like, it's not that I'm afraid of being in the water there, but I think that there's, they have such a, like a safety system put in place these days with the skis watching over all the surfers. Yeah. And I want to go out there and I want to try to get some crazy angles and, and, put myself in positions and, and, and show a different perspective. I, I used to swim out there a lot when I was younger, but every time someone goes down, like there's a group of guys that are on their skis and they're really good watermen and they race in to grab these guys. And when I'm shooting, like all you see is my head and it, yeah. it's like so hard to see me. And I, there's been a couple of times where the skis just whiz right past me. And I just kind of feel like I, I don't know. I feel like, you know, like a, a respect thing. Like I just don't want like to be to, in their way, to be in their way, yeah. to, to make their job harder, yeah. to create a, a bad situation and make it worse, you know, or, you know, something happened to me. So, um, yeah, long story short, I don't, I don't know. We'll get back to that one. I, I think, um, yeah. Well, I can't wait. And, uh, yeah. what's next for, uh, Brent Billman? What's going on? What's next for me? Um, well, I, I kinda, um, I got a little, uh, excitement to, to do something with a, a body of my work as specifically pipeline. Yep. I feel like I've, I've really kind of spent the better half of my life documenting pipeline. And so, um, I got a project that I'm working on that hopefully will be done, um, before next winter, um, to kind of highlight the best moments, um, that I've been able to capture, um, over the last 15, um, 17 years. So, Hopefully you guys will be stoked on that once it's done and check it out. And um, thanks so much for having me on the show, Jamie. Yeah, really, Brian. really stoked. And thanks for all the years of friendship and yeah, like good waves. <laughs> good times. Uh, yeah, Brent Billman. Look forward uh, to his. Uh... Whoa, 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 you weren't supposed to give everybody the hey. throw away the. We might have to edit that out. <laughs> Maybe it's some other kind of. But um, yeah, pleasure, dude. Always uh, fun. Um, whether we're surfing and filming or, or whatever is happening, it's always fun to see you catch up, talk story. And, uh, yeah, you guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate you. And, um, yeah, Spotify, Apple, all the streaming platforms. We are available everywhere. Hope you guys are enjoying these. And uh, for our YouTube friends, don't forget, click the link right here to subscribe, right here to watch more videos. And we'll see you on the next Friday. Aloha and peace from the 7 Mile Miracle.